Hello, this is Douglas Rumba, and welcome to Episode 9, Part 2 of my Linux Back to Basics command line tutorial series. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about process management. I've come to the conclusion that I want to talk about the hang-up signal in this part, and I might create future videos on more advanced process management to talk about some of the other features that are important, but uh, I don't want to go too deeply down into the weeds on this in this particular video series. So, hang up. What exactly is the hang up signal? What does it mean? When does it occur? And why do I care? If you recall, in episode 8 in job management, I showed the use of two commands. There's the nohop command and the disown command. And both of these allow you to keep a process running even after you have closed the terminal emulator or the virtual terminal in which the process is running. And I want to talk a little bit about how that works and more importantly why it's necessary. So to do this I have here and I'm just going to actually quick remove these. Um, to do this I have the same job test script that we've been using for the past couple videos and I'm going to kick it off. So dot slash job test and I'm going to redirect output to a file example.log and throw her into the background. There we go. So as you can see, if I do a word count on job test.py, or not job test.py, I'm sorry, that's not going to change very much. Uh, an example.log, we're slowly gaining lines. Now I'm going to fire up a second terminal emulator here, and I'm going to exit out of this first one normally. So this is just a normal close. Now, will that first, will that job test process still be running? Uh, you, you probably guess no, which considering the fact there are ways to keep it running once the terminal has closed, it stands to reason that it will have stopped. So if we do a quick look at this, you can see that, yep, we are, we're done. So it appears as though whenever you exit out of a terminal emulator, and I'll tell you right now that this extends to much more than just this Terminator terminal emulator, it's a pretty universal thing, that this job test process that was running inside of it died. So the terminology here is that the terminal emulator is a the parent process of the job test process. The job test is the child process. Now more specifically the terminal emulator is the parent of bash which is the parent of job test. But in effect the that the, uh, the um what did you, what did you get? The terminator terminal emulator is the is still a parent for the grandparent if you will. It's the grandparent of job test. So, let me try something else. Uh, what if I were to run job test, and I'm going to redirect to example two now. Throw it in the background. Great. So I've already shown that if I just close out of this thing normally, this process, this job test process, PID 2167, is going to stop. What happens if I don't close out of it normally? What if I kill it? So remember, if I send a kill signal to a process, that does not give the process any time to clean up after itself, like a normal closing or a termination signal would. It's just going to immediately abort it. So if I do a PS tacky here and find the terminator that I'm interested in, which I believe is going to be this guy, 2146, and I kill it with a kill signal of dash 9. Like so, it disappears. All right. 
So do you think that the job test script is going to be still running? Or did it die with its parent like it did last time? Well, let's find out. If we do a word count on this example 2.log, we have 38 lines right now. Is the file going to grow? Would you look at that? It is growing. So what happened? Why is it that whenever you exit out of the terminal emulator, it kills all of the processes running inside of it? But when you don't and you abort it and you don't give it a chance, it's almost as though you had run those child processes with no hub or as if though you had disowned them. What's going on here? Well, it has to do with SIG hop, which is the, uh, the one signal on kill, if you're interested. And this is the hang up signal. So this is one of the steps that bash and terminal emulators and your login shell and all these processes that contain a lot, or that have a lot of children uh, have is as part of their cleanup routine is whenever they close out, they send this dash one signal, this hang up signal to all of their children. And this hang up signal basically tells the children to close out as well. The, the point being that that way, if I close out of this bash shell, everything that's running inside of it is closed out as well. And it's all neat and tidy. When I killed that bash shell, what I did is I created what's known as an orphaned process. It's a process that has had its parent killed. It's an orphan. And it's no longer associated with any, well, that's not true. It is associated with, it's still the child of the init process, but it's not really associated with anything that you can see right here. And I can show that if I do this quick, see right now this job test, this is the orphan, is not associated with any uh, virtual terminal right now. When before I had killed his parent, it was most definitely running in TTY1, and it was actually running in one of these PTS. Right? It was the PTS that was associated with this Terminator. So it's lost its home, so to speak. And now the only way to get rid of it is to find it in this list here, 2167, and kill it. So orphaned processes can be a, and just to confirm, it's now gone. Um, orphaned processes can be a big nightmare sometimes because it's a process that, frankly, you probably don't even know is running anymore in certain cases, but it's still sitting there, running in the background, doing its thing, taking up system resources. So it's something to be aware of, is to be careful with, with Kill-9 because if you use it exclusively, and in certain circumstances, you can create a lot of orphaned processes, which hamper your system a little bit. So, right now, I've been talking about parent processes and child processes, but if I do a PS, that tacky like we've been doing, uh, there's no way to really tell. I mean, the children are probably going to be below the parent in order of things. But, I mean, like, obviously this PS is running inside of Terminator, but it's not grouped together with Terminator or anything. There are these two kernel worker threads, which are part of the operating system, that kind of interjected themselves in between. Because this is just ordered by PID. So these get PIDs get assigned based on... Uh, when the process is executed, so a higher PID will have been kicked off later, usually. Uh, if the system has been running for a particularly long period of time, that might not necessarily hold true anymore as process IDs are reaped or reclaimed. But in general, it's going to progress downwards with time. How do we know easily what is a child of what? Well, there's a syntax, or rather a set of options for PS, and uh, let's see if I get this right. It's EJ, capital H, just like this. And what this is going to do is display a very rudimentary version of the process tree. So parent-child relationships are often able to be represented using an abstract data type called a tree. 
I'll probably make something talking a lot about trees in detail at some point. But just to give you an idea of what they look like, I can just hit enter here. So you can see this looks very much like our original PS output, uh, except now there's a couple extra columns here, the PGID and the SID. This is the process group ID and the session ID. I'm not going to talk about them except to say that these two IDs are used to allow you to group related processes and send signals to the entire group at the same time. In fact, this probably has a bit to do with how your uh, how processes clean up after themselves using SIGHOP. Uh, in any event, the big difference that I want to draw your attention to is here in the command column. You'll see that there are tabs in here now. So these tabs represent children. We have here at the top process ID 2 is the kernel thread daemon, or th kernel thread daemon. This is the operating system, and you can see all the processes that are children of that. This is all operating system stuff. Here are those kernel worker threads that show up all over the place. Here we have PID 1. This is the init process. So on this particular system, init is actually called systemd. Uh, systemd is the init script system that this is using, so that makes sense. And everything as far as in user land, so all your applications and whatnot, are going to be children to the init, PID 1. It's worth noting that when I corrected myself earlier with orphans not being associated with anything anymore, technically speaking, an orphaned process is set to be the child of PID 1, uh, systemd in this case, or more generally speaking, the init process. So you would see, and I should have just left it running to show this, but you'd see your orphan process show up at this indentation level here. Um, in any event, we have a bunch of systemd stuff, and then here's where we actually get into the stuff that I'm interacting with right now. You have login. This represents my login session. The, uh, the login process itself, just to show you, looks like this. So what I've just done is I've hit Control-Alt-F2, and that's moved me to TTY2. I can log in to TTY2 with, say, root and my root password. And now I'm, I'm logged into TTY2 here. So what we'll see is if I go back using Control-Alt-F1 to TTY1. Let me clear this and I'll rerun. You can see now we have a login here. This represents this particular login session with Douglas. And then we have my roots login session over here. And you can see that that login is running bash on TTY2. Now, if I were to kill this login, which I'm going to need to use sudo to do, and I'm just going to just do a regular old kill. It's cleaned it all up. And if I hop back to TTY2, you'll see I've just logged myself out. So, fun fact, that is how you can kick your friend off your computer if they're logged into it remotely, is just kill their login session. Uh, assuming you have root access, of course. Anyway, just drilling down this list here, you have login and then bash. So remember, I mentioned that this whole environment that we're working in right now, this LXDE desktop environment, is running inside of bash. And this shows that. So bash, and then here is x. So start x, x init, x org. This x is the x Windows system, which is the uh, the ser the Windows server that sits behind almost all Linux desktop environments. That's not so much all of them anymore. There are now alternatives that are in process, but you get the idea. And then LX session. This is my actual um, login session to LXDE. Openbox is the window manager which handles you know, the, the visual appearance and the windows moving around. And then we have Terminator down here, which is P under PCMANFN and bash. And then finally we get to the PS command that I just ran. So you can see you get very, very deep down into this uh, process tree here. Now this is kind of 
this particular syntax for PS is one way of doing it. Uh, it there's a slightly prettier way though. If you run PS tree, this is going to give you a bit more uh, clear of an output. It doesn't have as much actual process information. Hold on, let me uh, let me widen this guy out a little bit and clear PS PS tree. There we go. But it gets the point across. So this is actually leaving out all the operating system stuff, and it only shows from the init process going down. So you can see the processes that are directly direct children of init. Uh, some virtual box stuff. Obviously, this is running inside of a virtual machine. And then here's here's me. Login, bash, start x, x init. And then that's going to branch out into the x Windows server and into my LXDE session and so on. So this is, PS tree is a really good way to uh, visualize the process tree on the system. Uh, and uh, just to say how this gets the name of tree, if you were to turn this sideways so that this was on the ground, you can see it starts to look a lot like a tree. They call system D the root of the tree and then it branches. So system D, the root branches out into all these things. So login has a branch that's bash, has this branch, has that branch. Here there's a fork and we have two branches on it. Uh, that's where the whole tree idea comes from. File systems are treated the same way. And I'll talk more about trees at some other point. But that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in this video is just this idea of the hang up signal and parent-child relationships with processes. Just to do a quick review then, in Linux, if a or uh, in Linux, if a process starts another process, in certain cases, depending on the context, that process that started becomes a child of the original process. So, for example, here in Bash, you can see the PS tree command that I just ran is a child to Bash. It's running inside of Bash. That makes sense. If I were to exit out of the parent then that parent, if it's well programmed, is going to send a hang up signal to all of its child processes to neatly clean everything up so you don't have any orphaned processes laying around on the system consuming resources. But sometimes either the parent process will not be programmed to do that properly, which has happened, or you will have to use a kill signal on that parent process in which case it won't have the opportunity to send out that hang up signal and in that case you're going to create orphaned processes and the only way to get rid of the orphans is to go in and kill them off manually using either PS tree or if we scroll way up we have PS tech EJ capital H the capital is important you can get a sort of a visual view of the process tree and what is what's a child to what which should give you a pretty good idea about it in addition I also discussed incidentally how you can switch to different virtual terminals which is using control alt and the function keys so this is we're in TTY 1 this is TTY 2 3 4 5 and 6 it only goes up to 6 and you can log in independently on each one of these. Each one has its own associated login process. And if you want to log someone off of a computer or force them to log off, you can kill their login process and that'll close everything out because the login will send sig hops, which will send sig hops and it'll just cascade down the tree and everything will get taken away. All right, so I'm going to, going to call this the end of this particular video. I thank you for watching, and I hope that you found this at least marginally useful. I will see you in the next one.